Because of quarantine and social distancing, a lot of us haven't been on a real date in a long time. Some of us longer than others. I've been struggling with virtual dating, so I decided to get some expert help. I'm Dr. Helen Fisher. I'm a biological anthropologist. I'm also chief science advisor to Match.com. I'm uh, Matthew Hussey. I'm a love life coach. He's a big YouTube star. I'm Dr. Sarah Madad. I'm a special pathogens uh, specialist for a healthcare system in New York City. She was also in the Netflix series Pandemic. I called up some friends to see how they feel. Do you feel comfortable on dating apps right now? I wasn't good at the apps before quarantine. I'm not <laughs> any better now. So like maybe this video is the answer. Would you keep dating? dating if quarantine just continues. For me, it's not healthy to just sit by myself indefinitely inside. Honestly, I am very desperate at this point. So like, and trying everything. That's why I agreed to this video. <laughs> On behalf of my friends, I brought some questions to the experts. A lot of us are wondering, is it actually possible, Matthew or, or and Helen, if you want to chime in, to make a romantic connection online. The moment you look at somebody, two brain regions become activated. A brain region linked, linked with trying to assess their personality and another brain region linked with, you know, whether they are physically attractive to you. Instantly, when you look at somebody, even on a video, those things begin to work. Do you think you can tell if you're attracted to someone right away on Zoom or like on a video call? Everyone said no, except Maximiliano. You're meeting someone in a very vulnerable state, and that could cause somebody to be more attractive because you're learning different layers of them as a person. Should we be dating during this pandemic? It is primarily spread, you know, through respiratory droplets. And this is why it's important to maintain that physical distance because you don't know who has it and who doesn't. And so if we uh, act irresponsibly and go out and want to meet people, well, then they're going to create new chains of transmission. All right. Sounds like we have to stick to online dating only. Most people weren't going out and meeting anyone last year either. People are not looking up at the room and who they could go and talk to. They're looking down at their phones. This time has only only sped up a trend of people rushing to the easiest way to flirt with someone without risking getting rejected. Matthew's right. A lot of people were online dating before quarantine. Last year, over 30 million people were online dating in the US alone. Did you use dating apps before the pandemic? Everyone is familiar with the dating apps. Okay, everyone did. So did I. And it's only gotten more popular as people have been stuck inside. On Bumble, messages sent saw a 20% increase in San Francisco, Seattle, and New York. Over on Hinge, there was a 30% increase in messages sent. Tinder saw its biggest day ever on March 29th with over 3 billion swipes in just one day. 3 billion people in general is a lot to think about. We have to be very careful not to go to extremes. You, you know, my dating life is on hold until further notice. That to me is overkill. If you continue to meet people and put yourself out there in even in safe and responsible ways, your love life can still change in an instant. Bottom line is I think it's a very good time to date. Money and sex are off the table. People have time to talk and there's something to talk about. We're seeing a new stage in the dating process. So it's an opportunity to really get to know somebody before you have the first date and so by the time you do have the first date it's going to be much more meaningful so this is interesting because on tinder messages got 30 percent longer over quarantine so people are getting a little bit deeper with their conversations and the beauty of this is you're going to have those conversations before you get into bed and the kissing starts all right so our experts seem to be really good at talking theoretically so i want to throw a wrench into this here's my dating profile go easy on me we have no idea who you are most people recommend that you have at least five photographs and you should brag a little you've got a good job show people that job show some show people the hobbies that you're doing i'm not seeing anything but that sense of humor i'm i'm waiting for what i call unique pairing if you can find someone who can be very sexy in one moment and then very goofy in the next, that's a very attractive pairing. The more unique pairings you can demonstrate quickly, the more attraction you're gonna get at the outset in what is a very crowded marketplace. Yeah, I'll be making changes to my profiles. I'll <laughs> update you guys <laughs> on what happens, but don't hold your breath. Cyrus, is there something that you should put on your dating profile to acknowledge that you want to be socially distanced? I think that's important because I think it's, a, it's good to show that you are abiding by public health measures that you want to not only keep yourself safe, but you want to keep other people safe. And I think if you put 
things like, you know, I enjoy, you know, watching a movie or I enjoy, you know, um, coffee, things like that, where people can show that, you know, you want it, you're staying home and you're doing these things. The harder part now is when you actually get to a first date, you're not going out to meet someone. You're, you're maybe having a date on FaceTime or on Zoom. Have any of you been on a Zoom date? No. No video call dates. Interesting. On OkCupid, virtual dates have gone up 700%. The thought of going on a Zoom date just feels awkward to me and like something that I wouldn't want to want to do. I don't right. imagine a Zoom date is going to be any more awkward than a regular date. I get to wear fewer pants. We know that conversation is a powerful attraction tool. We know that visually being able to see someone, which just like we are right now, we still have the, the benefit of. These things are all massive attraction triggers. Are you allowed to treat this like dates? in the past where you can just date somebody if you just want sex. It doesn't necessarily have to be a romantic thing. For some people it's sexting. For other people it's sending photos. For other people it's taking their clothes off on a video call together. Sex on the internet, I mean, you're not gonna get pregnant. You're not gonna catch any diseases. You're not gonna walk the walk of shame. Okay, let's say we take it past the Zoom date. I mean, are we allowed to be meeting people in person? The biggest weapon that we have against COVID-19 and the absence of a vaccine or a therapeutic is our behavior. If you want to see somebody keeping that six foot distance, you know, wearing a face mask, not, you know, coming in contact, physical contact with them. Syra, can I ask you a question? Is that tantamount to saying you're, you're asking anyone who is currently single to be celibate until there's a vaccine? Not necessarily, but if you know of, of somebody, you know, that somebody has, has been responsible and has not gone out to 10 different places and they themselves have been careful uh, in terms of, you know, sheltering a place, isolating themselves, then maybe there's some sort of confidence there that, you know, that, okay, if I meet this person, you know, they uh, potentially may not be infected. But again, you're taking a risk. Can you get COVID-19 from having sex? It depends what you're doing, but... <laughs> I'm sure there's droplets somewhere there. <laughs> <laughs> okay, gonna shake things up one more time because we have a surprise guest question. Hey there, my name is Kyle and I've got a few questions for the dating experts. I've had asthma my entire life and now that we're in the middle of this pandemic, it's giving me a lot of anxiety and a lot of uncertainty about what that means for my dating life. How do you recommend even approaching this subject with partners? And second, is dating something that I can even do? I always start with myself. And so if I were her, I would say, well, you know, I've been tested a lot of various times and, uh, and uh, because I do have asthma, um, I would really like to know whether you've been tested. You just want to make sure that you're being uh, safe and that you're keeping your distance from people. So certainly not, you know, kissing anybody or, you know, having that physical contact. Well, Helen, what happens if you are on a date with someone and they're not willing to have that conversation about whether they've been tested for COVID? I think that's a dead giveaway that they're not going to be able to tell you about other things about themselves too. Okay, let's sum this all up. All right, we learned all this great stuff from you guys and I'm actually feeling positive about online dating now. Um, but we need some actionable steps. So based on everything we've heard, here are some guidelines for dating during COVID-19. I think it's important to stay informed. One of the issues I think, and something that I'm certainly very concerned about is the psychological aspect of all of this. Never feel as if you can't go to a healthcare professional or healthcare provider to talk about any of your issues, whether it's mental health or anything else. On a dating app, the best thing you can do is either talk about things that excite and interest you, or be a little vulnerable about things after you've met nine people stop get off the dating site and get to know at least one of those people better someone is not going to get to know all those things about you through text and that whilst the conversation may start by text you have to be brave enough and bold enough to graduate that conversation to a phone call a facetime a zoom call a voice memo even we're in it. It's happening. Now let's talk about movies. Now let's talk about books we're reading. Now let's talk about what's going on in our lives. You go meet someone in person. As soon as I see this person, I can say, normally I'd give you a giant hug. And I wish I could, because you look really handsome. But uh, I am having to be extra careful, especially as someone with asthma. Are they an individual that doesn't care about what public health recommendations are? They think that COVID-19 is something that of a fluke. They think that they're invincible. So I think for me, just first knowing and having that trust and confidence, knowing that this individual has been responsible 
is a big thing. And at the end of the day, we want to make sure that we're protecting ourselves and other people around us. I'm going to take all this back to my friends and see what they think. It really made me think about the fact that this will not get over soon. It's just like one of those things where there's all these like circles of accountability that you kind of have to pay attention to. Having talked to them long enough to really build up that trust. I think both of us having tests to make sure we're both healthy. It's part of our new normal and that's just something that we're going to have to accept. All right, so after talking with everyone, I learned a lot about dating during COVID-19 and I hope you guys did too. But dating is just one of a million ways our lives have changed during this pandemic. So I want to ask you guys what you think our next episode should be about. Let us know in the comments below and be sure to subscribe so you don't miss out. Now, if you'll excuse me, I'm going to go hit Tinder and just indiscriminately swipe right for about an hour. Peace. Might I say you've gone to very elaborate measures to upgrade your dating profile to bring us all here today together. <laughs> That's the true purpose of this is entire this video. Even you got me. <laughs>